GLC presents Brought to you by the donations of our faithful partners We're continuing the series on dismantling the wall between you and God by walking free from your past. Have you been applying the lessons so far? Have you watched all of this series? If you haven't, you need to get back and watch it because every single lesson is all by itself and it's so important. God has such a deep love for you. You're, you're so special to God. Do you know that? Do you think, well, maybe other people are special, but I'm not. No, you're special. If you are the only person who ever lived on the earth, Jesus still would have come and died just for you. That's how precious you are to God. And he wants you free. He wants you to dismantle this wall, to dis take the past out. Well, today we're talking about one of the biggest pieces of the wall, maybe the biggest. And when we remove it, what freedom is going to come to you? Well, what's this piece I'm talking about? Forgiving yourself and forgiving others. It's hard, isn't it? We all have hurts in life. We all have things done for us that doesn't even make sense. We didn't do anything to them. Why did they hurt us? But we've hurt people, too. You know that about yourself. I know that about myself. And to really be free in life, you have to deal with the pain once and for all. And you have to deal with it with Jesus helping you. You can say, well, I've tried a lot of times, Betty. I've been to a lot of counselors. I've done everything. It's still there. Well, this time, I want you to do it with Jesus. I want you to tell him, Jesus, I mean it. I'm serious. I know you understand better than I understand. I know you know things about it that I don't know. But I want to do it once and for all with you. How do you forgive the unforgivable? Do you have things like that in your life? Has it been done to you? Have you done the unforgivable to someone else? It's so hard. And that's what most people want to know. How do you really do it? And what do you do if people keep doing the same thing to you over and over? Or you keep doing the same thing over and over? Well, I want to read a quote to you. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and then discover that the prisoner was you. See, forgiveness, whether it's what you've done, what's been done to you, it, unforgiveness makes you a, a prisoner but forgiving sets you free. It doesn't matter if they change, if they recognize they did wrong. It doesn't matter if they don't forgive you. It doesn't matter. What matters is you are free. You have done it, and it's over. And you can walk free. Look at this first picture. Look at this man and woman arguing. They're probably shouting so loud at each other, they're not even listening to the other people. And they're both wrong. You can tell by their anger. They both think the other is done wrong, and they, and they both done wrong. Now look at this scripture in Jeremiah. For I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. God made us to be good people. God made us to live good lives. And what have we done? Well, ever since Adam and Eve, we have done wrong. You know, sometimes when your children mess up and they've done things, they've done, some of them have done horrible things. And you think, I'm such a failure. And I've got to forgive them again and again and again. Well, just remember, God only started out with two children, Adam and Eve, and they both did wrong. So you're not so far off, you're not so bad off. And yet, for thousands of years, God says, you've done wickedly. People have been wicked, but I'll forgive it. And then I won't remember it. 
Now, don't you want to be like that? Wouldn't you like to have the forgiveness occur in your life so much that you really don't think about it anymore? Do you ever forget it? I don't know that you do. And I don't think you have to wait until you can forget it. But I know one thing. God can take the sting out of it so much that even when you think about it, you go, oh, you know, I used to be so upset about that. I used to be so upset with them. That was such a struggle in my life. Oh, God's done a wonderful thing for me. See, he can do that for you. Now, forgiving others is hard. I'm not minimizing that it's hard. Some of it's not hard. But the big stuff is really hard. Some of it, you have to do it over and over and over and over. I have one of those in my life. I was sexually abused by a pedophile. And I know for sure that man sexually abused hundreds, probably, of children. But I know many, many, many. 25 years later, I know he was still doing it. How do you forgive somebody who does something so bad and harms so many little children? How do you forgive them, really forgive them? Well, I want to be very honest with you. I have to do it over and over. And I have to say, God, your word says, I can't forgive you, Betty, if you don't forgive him. So I forgive him, God. And I'm going to go over that with you. I'm going to show you what forgiveness is not. And maybe that will help you be able to forgive the unforgivable. You know, asking forgiveness is hard. Woo! One time I heard a man say, make a list of all the people you need to ask forgiveness of. There won't be that many. You think there might be hundreds, but there's not. There may be six or seven. And ask God to prepare them for you to come and ask their forgiveness. Ask God to let you see that sin through their eyes. And then ask God for the right words. And if you do it right, when you go to them, you will see a Christ-like love spring up in you, and they'll forgive you. So it's hard, but you can do it. Sometimes the unforgiveness in you has been there so long, or the offense was so bad, that bitterness has developed. You know, in Hebrews it says, be real careful. You don't let a root of bitterness spring up in you. Spring up because it defiles people around you. And you don't want to do that. You could be a mother that defiles her children, a dad that defiles his children, a worker that defiles their co-workers. You know, you don't want to do that. And God says, of everything, don't have bitterness within you. Why? Well, having bitterness within you is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Isn't going to happen. Even Shakespeare said, to err is human. To forgive is divine. Wow. Forgiveness is divine. And it truly is. It is the way God is. I read you that verse. God said, I'm going to forgive your wickedness and I'm not going to remember it anymore. Somebody said, you know when the Bible says God forgives your sins as far as the east is from the west and how far is that? It's between one hand and another on the cross. That's how far the east is from the west. Between those two hands, all of the sin of mankind was forgiven. If you've never had a ministry and you say, well, Lord, I'd like to have a ministry. I want to have a ministry. Well, if you spent the next two years going back and making things right with the people that you need to ask forgiveness of, that you need to be reconciled with, you know, the ministry of reconciliation is one of the greatest ministries you could ever have. God blesses it. God helps you do it, and God restores things. Even if it took you two years to do it, you could do it. Now we're going to get really specific. You ready? I hope you have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. I hope you can write this down because you're going to need to do this after this is over today. You're going to need to think it out. I want you to think of three 
painful memories in your life. I want you to be brave. I want you to be open. I want you to be specific. Write them down. And then I want you to ask yourself, was any of it your fault? Was all of it their fault? Could it have been prevented? And then I want you to begin the forgiveness process in these three painful ones. You may need to have a box of Kleenex right there by you because remembering it will be so painful. In doing this, in thinking of these three painful memories, and you may have more than that, and if you have ten, now's the time to write them all down. Maybe even talk to somebody you trust. Maybe even say, I'm going to tell you about something that happened to me, and I want you to pray with me because I want to be rid of this. I want you to listen and pray with me. The hardest thing is to realize when you forgive, you're going to let God handle what happens to them. Sometimes, especially when it's sexual abuse in a family, you know, it can cause alienation to deal with it. You have to accept that. But just remember, Jesus is there with you. He's wanting to set you free. He's going to walk you through this, just you and him, right there when you're writing this down. And think about it. Ask him how to deal with it. Help, help me, Lord. Now, what do people do normally with the things that I'm talking about, these deep hurts, these deep wounds that have caused such unforgiveness? Why have you not dealt with it before? People tend to deny it. No, it didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. Mm -mm, that didn't happen. Or they tend to bury it. Well, I just decided on my own. I'm never going to think about it again. I'm just burying it. That doesn't do any good either. Avoid it. I don't want to talk about it. No, nope, don't want to talk about it. Ignore it. Well, it's there, but I'm playing like it's not there. Making fun of it. You know, sometimes people use humor to avoid the truth. Or maybe you think about it and get depressed. Or maybe you give answers that you wish were the truth, but they're not the truth about it. Whatever it is, it's like I said in that other lesson, name the baby. And this time, say, Jesus, I've never gone through this with you, and I want to go through this with you. There's one thing true of every person that's watching this. The pain will never go away until you deal with it properly. It'll always be there. It will affect everything you do, whether you think it does or not. You'll drag it with you everywhere you go. You can move to a new town to get away, and you drag it there with you. You will not have real peace, real joy, real victory in your life until God and you deal with it. You see... God does have a destiny for you, but he doesn't want these things in your past stopping you, holding you back. One time someone called me that I really trusted, and she said, Betty, I know you've dealt with guilt. Have you ever dealt with shame? I said, are they different? She said, oh, yeah, they're different. You need to learn how to deal with shame because otherwise every time you stand up and proclaim the name of Jesus and stand up for Jesus, the devil will say, you remember that? You remember that? You remember that? And it'll hold you back. So deal with it, Betty. She said, get some books on shame and read it. Francis Frangipane has a real good book on it. You know, even though you say you're okay in dealing with these things you've written down, you say, well, I, I think I'm okay, but reality says you're not. Why? Because you can't quit thinking about it. Maybe you... Uh, have sleeplessness, maybe you have deep thoughts about it, maybe you have headaches, maybe you have bad recurring dreams, maybe you have a sadness that you can't identify. Why am I sad all the time? Maybe your anger overwhelms you, your bitterness overwhelms you, your unhappiness. 
I'm telling you, if you'll take part in this and you'll let God walk through this with you, it'll stop. You see, a lot of times, your present emotional problems have roots in your emotional past. And God wants you to be free. You have scars. You think, well, I got over that. I have the scar to show it. And God says, no, it's not healed underneath. Let's do it one more time. And let's get rid of it for good. Won't even have a scar. God can take your scars away. Jesus has the scars. You don't need to have them anymore. Sometimes, to avoid these things that I've had you write down, you will manipulate things. You will manipulate people to avoid them, to avoid the pain. It's time to get honest. Time to deal with it. Time to admit it. Bur burying it will not heal it. Don't kid yourself. Some of you have pain from being in wars. Things were done to you that were unspeakable. Things you were done. And burying it does not heal it. But I'm going to show you what will. I'm going to give you some steps with these things you've written down. You know, the bigger the hurt, the bigger the devastation. Therefore, the more important it is to let it out, deal with it. Now, I'm going to talk to you first about what forgiveness is not. Okay? What it is not. Because sometimes when you're walking through forgiving these deep things that you're thinking about, you think, well, what, what, do I, what about it really? What about their part? What about if they don't change? What about, what about, what about? So I'm going to give you some things that forgiveness is not. I got it from a man named Ron Hutchcraft Ministries. I saw it online. I thought it was great. Ron Hutchcraft. First of all, forgiveness is not an emotion. It's a choice. Now, doesn't that set you free? How about that? You can walk free from your past just knowing that. You don't have to wait till you feel it. It's a choice. I choose to forgive them. I choose to do it. I have choice. I'm a human being. I can choose. I choose to forgive. Forgiveness is also not looking for repayment. It's not saying you've got to pay me back for what you did to me. No, it's not looking for that. You don't have to look for that. You don't even have to wait for your anger to subside. You don't have to. It might not come until after you forgive. So in the middle of that anger, just say, I choose to forgive. And it may be just gritting your teeth and doing it. Did you know... Initially, forgiveness is not about the person who wronged you. It's about you and how you took it. What if God did it like you've been doing it? And he said, oh, I'll forgive you. I don't want to, but I will. It's all your fault. No. You know, you, it's really not about that person initially. It's about how you dealt with it. Here's another thing forgiveness is not. It doesn't require them to apologize or be remorseful. Sometimes, if you have to wait for people to apologize, you might as well give it up. They're not ever going to do it. Or if you wait for them to be remorseful, they're not ever going to do it. What about the pedophile I'm talking about? He's, I don't think he's ever been remorseful. Well, I can forgive him anyway because God gives me the power to do it. And besides that, it unties God's hands and he can work in those people's lives in new ways because you decide, I don't have to wait till you apologize. I don't have to wait till you feel bad about what you did. I'll tell you another one. Forgiveness is not. They don't even have to be aware they hurt you. Did you know that there's hurts you're carrying around with you right now? And if you went to the person, they would say, I don't even remember what you're talking about. I did? 
I don't even remember it. And you think, what do you mean you don't remember? I've, I've suffered with it for three years. What are you talking about? Of course you ought to remember it. And they don't. What are you going to do then? Why, you still got to forgive them. I'll tell you something. It makes a big difference in your decision to go forward if you forgive. But if they don't apologize, if they don't feel remorseful, if they don't remember it, it doesn't stop you from going forward. You, you can go forward. It doesn't mean you'll forget it completely. It just, re it just means the pain will be gone. I've heard people say, well, if you, don't have, if you don't forget it, you really haven't forgiven. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Because some stuff, it's, it's there. It's going to be there forever. But the pain is gone. Jesus has touched it. You don't have what you had before when you think of it. It's like, yeah, it happened, but I forgave them. And you're free. I'll tell you something else forgiveness is not. Do it once and for all, and that's it. You may have to do it over and over every time you think about it, like I've had to do. There's other things. I forgave them, and it's over. I don't even want to deal with it. It doesn't mean you have to stay in relationship with them. You know, sometimes people wrong you, and you think, well, I guess I still need to be friends with them. No, you don't. That's not a sign of forgiveness. Well, what if they're in your family? What if you're married to them? What do you do then? You set boundaries. Some people will continue to wrong others all of their lives. God doesn't want them to be like that, but they can be like that. You have to learn how to set a boundary and say, you can't go over this boundary. I love you and I forgive you, but you can't do this to me anymore. I won't allow it. I think too much of myself. God thinks too much of me. You can't talk to me like that ever again. I won't do it. I'll walk out of the room. And so you have to learn to set boundaries. Well, what happens when you set those boundaries? It makes people mad. They get so angry because you're not playing your part anymore in this deal. It doesn't matter. You don't even have to stay in a relationship with them. What else is forgiveness? Well, it doesn't mean they got away with it. It doesn't mean that you're condoning what they did and you're agreeing with it. No. What does the Bible say? Vengeance is mine. I will repay. God's saying, you don't repay. I'll take care of it. And you know what God does that you wouldn't do? He does it in order to heal the person. If you took care of it, you might be doing it to hurt them. Hurt them back. They hurt you. I'll hurt you back. No. God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Let him do it. Another thing forgiveness is not is excusing their sin. You don't have to excuse it. Well, they didn't know. Well, no, you don't have to excuse it. Just call it what it is and move on from there. Move on. God wants you to walk in freedom. I'll tell you something else. It's not wrong to call out to God and cry out for justice. If you are genuinely wronged and it was bad, cry out for justice. Ask God. God, I want justice in this. God's a just God. Don't we know that about him? He has perfect justice for it. But it is, forgiveness is not wanting them to suffer. We don't want that. So here we go. You ready? Get those things you got written down. Number one, bring up the issue. Here's what happened, Lord. I know you know it, but I'm going over it. Do it out loud if you can. Dealing with it honestly, with humility, dependency on God. Here's the key. Go back and think how it made you feel. All the pain, all the hurt, it made me feel this, it made me feel this, God, I felt this, I thought this, I wanted to do this. Get a pillow. If you need to scream, scream in the pillow where nobody hears you screaming. Whatever the pain, how bad it is. And I'm talking to people who have deep, deep, serious, serious pain, unforgivable pain, because God is going to help you. So express your emotions one more time. 
as openly as you can and say, God, this is how I feel. I want them to die, God. I want you to hurt them. I want you to do something bad to them. Be that honest and open with God. Next, take responsibility for your attitudes and your responsibility, your responses, I'm sorry. Just say, Lord, I thought this and I did this and that's wrong. I'm sorry. But I want to settle the accounts with you, God. If these people never know, they never know between you and me, God, we're settling it today. I want it over today. Remember, I said, if you have somebody you really trust, a pastor, a mentor, another very strong Christian, have them walk through it with you. You might say, well, what if the person's dead that I have to forgive? Did you know you can even have somebody sit in for that person and say, I just, and they can pretend to be that person. And you can say, I just want to tell you how I felt. I felt this and I felt this. It's very important. Then say, I forgive myself. I forgive them. Please take the hurt away, God. You may have to do that over and over. Set those boundaries. They don't get off the hook. Forgiving yourself is exactly the same way, the same steps. Look at this man begging forgiveness from a woman. Sometimes you feel that way. You can't even forgive yourself. Well, you're going to have to accept the work of Jesus Christ. He died for all sins, even yours. You're going to have to forgive yourself. You're going to make mistakes. We are all sinners. Be forgiving. Forgive yourself. Be a big person. Choose to forgive yourself. You know, Peter said, how many times to forgive? And, God, and he said, 70 times. God said, if you'll forgive, I'll forgive you. Bye. I'm Betty Swan with Betty Swan Ministries and Pennies from Heaven. I'm so excited about giving you the update. Do you know that together you and I and so many, many people have gathered pennies and small change and together we've gathered over $81,000. And I started out with $3.22. So together we have fed widows, orphans, Lonely people, children, all over the world, 14 countries so far, all because of you. Send your money to Wells Fargo Bank to the account of Pennies from Heaven, Betty Swan Ministries, Amarillo, Texas. Thank you. God bless you. You are great, and I really appreciate it. Order your copy today from the GLC Bookstore by calling the number on your screen. Please include the program number when ordering.